Thanks, Rich. So I think what, what this diagram helps to explain is which structures are affected and, and cause which restriction in range of motion. So classically, what we we're taught, taught is, is the lack of external rotation. And if you had to do one test, I would say that it would be the test to do, right? Because you just got to compare your external rotation compared to the other side. And then if, but what one thing I would suggest, and I think we will show the video later, is probably do this passively because quite often, if you get people to say, can you externally rotate, and especially uh, during these times where we're doing quite a lot of video consultations, you get people doing sort of all sorts of things like this, and it's quite difficult to get them to externally rotate. If you've got a patient in front of you, uh, uh, this is one movement I, I do get them, and I just hold their arm and see if I can externally rotate compared to the other side, because sometimes you can be fooled into thinking they've got reasonable external rotation when they don't. Um, but you know, when, when that external rotation in neutral's gone, that's where your coracohumeral ligament has been affected. Uh, and then, you know, if you've got the external rotation in mid elevation, uh, then you know, you've got your middle glenohumeral ligament and then uh, external rotation in abduction. Again, see, so this is a good test to do, uh, whether, the, whether, whether someone can rotate outwards or inwards in abduction and we'll show you that on a video and what that does is, is it shows you which sort of uh, capsular structures have been affected every so often you will be fooled into thinking someone hasn't got a frozen shoulder because their external rotation is absolutely fine or, or not as restricted uh, it said in the majority of patients the external rotation will be restricted but in some patients you'll find it's not restricted but you, they've got restriction in other range of motion